Oh, banana. I'm back, guys. Time for Yu-Gi-Oh. Let's put on Yu-Gi-Oh! Lo-Fi relaxing beats to send people to Shadow Realm. Let's see how, let's see how good this music is. It's like 30 minutes. Maybe we, we can have a, like a little explore of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Lo-Fi. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Curious the quality of these, but welcome on him. We're going to do some, uh, some Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments. Um, kind of. So, if you guys don't know... The changeover has happened. We're now in the Synchro Festival tournament to ARC. Um, now, like I said, things haven't changed a lot. I think the meta currently is all kinds of whack. Um, the new introductions to the new cards have not, like... Um, I think gone swimmingly <laughs> because we now have um, Despias, which I honestly I don't think Despias seem particularly strong from the ones I've I've run into. Um, the way the meta is currently was very focused on um, sort of like the stronger sort of cards like Drytrons and things like that. Is still they're still far more powerful and hard to stop. Um, Baron de Floor surprisingly has made her amp impact and you might see me actually going to use this card at some point um i might actually be able to get a omni gate card um and it's only once per turn but it's nice to have one um because i don't really my my other omni gate is uh two eights which i don't try to dump my two eights too often um i usually use them on other various cards but um this pack has been very useful for people who have been doing the synchro uh, event but if you're one of the people that are burning a lot of cash to play this event i feel like it's going to hurt you in the long run i honestly do not think people should be putting in any cash for this event i do think that cards like junk speeder and uh clear wing crystal very handy for certain decks stardust dragon i'm not sure how useful he is for a lot of decks um but uh i would say baron the floor is probably the one from this set if you were to get one from here um but i've been running into a lot of people running these cards um which suggests to me a lot of people dumping some cash in here um this is not my priority like this is a card is an optional card for my blue eyes deck um so i'm probably not going to do so despias again like i said Zero WN underscore Samurai just subscribed. Is that you, Wu <laughs> Thank you, Samurai. It is. Did you want to join me, Samurai? We're just we've just started, so I'm I'm just talking about the Synchro event for now. Um, but yeah, Despia is a very much. This pack is very much. If you're playing Despia, I think if you want Swamp Mud Swamp Dragon and Sea Monster, you could definitely go for these two cards, but I think you'd probably craft them because you probably only need one of them. Um, I do think Advanced Ritual is a very good card, but I don't know how many people would dump for it. So again, unless there's something you're very, very wa like wanting, like maybe Dogmatica, because um, I think there's... I don't know if there's many Dogmaticas in here. I think there's just really the... I feel like uh, Virtuous is probably the only one that you might really want from this set, but... It really depends on like what you what you're trying to get for, um, but it seems like it's very focused on Despias. Also, thank you for using your Prime sub as well, Samurai. I realize I have to use my Prime somewhere. I haven't done it. I've gotten any new Master Duel decks, so not today. You don't need to play any different decks. Just play your standard deck. I still play my deck. So I'll, I've changed things up recently, chat. So we'll jump into the festivals shortly, but. Um, I, I was actually looking at making a Witchcrafters deck. I was trying to see how cheap they were um, and noted that if you were to play the modern version of it or the version people play on ladder, it's very grass is greener focused, which means it's a fat deck, which I'm probably not going to do. So I'll probably make a lean Witchcrafters at some point because I only need a few. Like if I can get Hain and um, Madame Vere and Creation, I don't really need Ultra Res to make that. That's pretty relatively cheap. So I'm excited to try that out. But... 
my current Blue Eyes deck is actually back to being a more lean version of uh, my Blue Eyes deck. A card that, this looks a lot like my older Blue Eyes deck. This this feels a lot more familiar to me, minus me running to access Code Talker. Um, I've been testing out Dragon Guard Dragon Cataclysm. I actually really like this card, but I've been trying to decide whether or not I would prefer to get more infinite impertinences or Guard Dragon. Um, Guard Dragon is only really helpful if things are going pear-shaped and I have a dragon on the board. Um, traps are a lot harder to play around if they've just got directed cut, like destruction, but a lot of things have destruction immunity, so. But one I wanted to talk about that I never actually really had used before that I think is actually very useful for this particular deck and works with Dingarusu is Magical Hound. I'd never really seen this card before. I don't think I've ever run into it. If this card is in your hand, target one face up spell or trap card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So it targets uh, continuous spell cards. If you do, special summon this card. You can only use this effect once per turn. It works from the hand or the graveyard. This gets a tuner onto the field by using one of their materials. And what's fantastic about this is there's a lot of lock cards that people are running right now, like um, uh, skill drain and things like that. And it straight up removes them out of play, which is fucking crazy. Like the Dark Magician cards, yes. Yeah, it, it's a strangely a Dark Magician like card, but it's it's very good. It it's a uh, one star tuner, which is perfect for me um, as a I run both Silver and Spirit. Um, I will probably end up focusing a bit more on tuners if I get Baron the Floor um, to work with Hal uh, Hal Christron. Hucky Fibrax, I never say his name properly. Um, but you'll notice it's kind of, I still haven't, I'm leaning into stuff, pulling things out, putting things in. Um, you'll notice I'm down to one Max C and I'm almost tempted to take Max C out. Um, we're almost at that point that I might take Max out um, and lean more into the drawer aspect. But we'll see, because the deck is very focused on first turn. So it's very much like, trying to deal with a uh, heart get heart uh, out with a dingarasu or get uh blue eye spirit with heart earth so if i can get those those combinations out it's either two eights uh four eights to get all them or two eights uh three eights and a tuner it's very nice the only thing i want is essentially a link path and Probably removing my photon dragons to put in, um, uh, probably our girl, where is she? Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. <clears throat> Her protection she provides is so good that I kind of want to use her. Um, but we'll see. I really like this card. I think this is a very dope card. Um, and it's surprising more people don't use her, but, um, as you can see, my, my wish list is still quite large, unfortunately, but we'll get there. Um, I'm almost at a point that I can craft something, uh, but I've been focusing on getting more infinite impertinences at the moment because they're very good cards. But yeah, that's where we're currently at in New Gear. It's been a little while. I've been playing True Dracos. I've been playing Dragon Maids. I've been playing a Chaos Max form. Um, I was thinking about doing Witchcrafters. And then we have our Synchro deck. So I played two Synchro decks so far for the event. Um, one was uh, my Blue Eyes, uh, a Synchro Blue Eyes. I don't have a lot of cards for it. And I'll jump into this problem soon enough, but the new version I've been playing is, um, oh, hello. Silence. Hey, Silence. Welcome in Raiders, how you all doing? You joined me just as we were talking about uh, the decks we've been running or decks we've been doing for the event. How was stream? What were you guys doing? Oh, of course. I had a feeling. Oh, I can't I can't hear you too well, Silence. Feels like we're doing some card inspections. Oh man, Hundred Eyes Dragon. Hundred Eyes is an SR in this in this god. Oh, this is a card packet opening. I see what's happening here. Also, welcome in Just Joseph and Unknown User Nose. And thank you for the follow, Crazy Drunk. How you all doing? 
Peepo hey, peepo hey. Have you tried playing Jerry Bean's Man? What the hell is Jerry Bean's Man, Samurai? <laughs> Jerry Beans? Oh. No, I haven't. I don't know. Apparently, I don't know. I'm assuming this boy does not have any associated cards. He's just a normal, terrible card. He's very cute, though. But yes, uh, we, we're currently just discussing the event. Um, so as you can see, it's actually a Cyframe deck. Originally, I, I started this off as a pure Cyframe deck, and it worked pretty well. Um, I did have a couple of problems with people were playing in certain styles and I didn't have the right Cyframe in hand. So then I was like, well, I don't want to craft cards. What are some virtual worlds that I have that I can just craft? And I already had a lot of the normals and rares. That I could, can I get a virtual Cyframes working without the ultra rares? Because I do not want to dump for this event. I think that it's like, um, I think that the virtual event, the virtuals are worth getting for ladder, but I don't think it's worth dumping for the event. I feel like that if you're trying to make currency from the event, don't waste currency on the event is my opinion. Um, I've seen a lot of people making some weird decks. I'm like, you must have used up a lot of cash for that. I didn't get teleported with the raid, so I didn't get to catch anything you said. No prop silence. Welcome on in. We, yeah, we're just uh, we're just doing um, we're talking about the synchro event, wife 42. Mostly because I'm trying to figure this out. It's just I'm in between. I'm I'm learning virtual worlds because I don't know how to play virtuals. And I'm trying to see how much I can get away with having it a Cyframe virtual deck without having a lean on all the, the virtuals. Because um, there is a bit of synergy between them. But I'm missing cards like um, uh, Psy Rescue or whatever it's called. Um, Psy Emergency. This one here. Emergency Teleport. I want to get two of this card eventually. But right now it's like without it, it's... Like, the merger of these two decks isn't super, super working, so just seeing what we can do. Because that's the thing. You should teach, you should treat the events as like a space to just mess about and have fun and see what you can get working. Um, I'm not the biggest Psy player, so I don't really know a lot of things. So if you guys know Psy frames really well or, you know, Virtual Worlds really well, and there's some cards that you think to like check out, then let me know. But we'll move into the main problem of this particular event. Hey, Rainbow. Oh, thank you, Rainbow. Thank you to my favorite mod on Twitch.tv. <laughs> don't, don't quote that. How come Blue Eyes popped up when you search virtual? Did I? Yeah, you're right. What the hell? Oh, it's his, his flavor text that says virtually invincible. Um... Welcome back, Thomas. <laughs> Clip it. Clip it, ship it. So yeah, so mostly this is... The reason why I'm running Planet Pathfinder is so I can get um, Cyframe Circuit out, mostly because I have uh, quite a different lot of Cyframes. I probably will remove Epsilon and Delta. These two are not very good cards, in my opinion, at all. Um, because activating on Spell Card or activating on a uh, Trap Card... Trap cards, pretty much, you won't see it when you have no cards on the board. Like, you must have bricked pretty hard if you've got nothing on board. And then Cyframe Delta is, like, uh, good, but only if you're versing a spell deck. So, so he can be beaten. Virtually. Virtually. But what I would say is, again, this is a space to just play around. But... Let's have a look at the real problem here. If you have looked at all of the deck lists that people have been running for this event, if you already didn't use a synchro deck and gotten all the cards because you actually play synchro and ladder for whatever reason, this was an expen this is an expensive event to play a good deck. Otherwise you're not playing by you're not playing synchro at all. A lot of people are playing like true Dracos and things like that. Um, I've seen some weird decks. Um, but my problem is 
all of the good synchros are ultra rares or super rares. The rares and normals, there isn't that many. Look at this. Most, there's not a lot. There's probably even amount, there's more super rares synchros than there are rares. And there's almost the same amount of ultra rares, which is fucking nuts. Why are the, why are synchros so expensive? The reason why I have an issue with this is most people who play synchros know this. Synchros are very archetypal. A lot of the boss monsters or the synchros require very specific things, not just the tuners, but the synchro, like the actual like materials themselves. So synchros are usually not like, if you're playing a synchro deck, you're very likely probably just splashing them in and they're not your main reliance, unless you're something like virtuals or something like that. You play assault mode cards. So it's kind of just really bizarre that we've just got like this situation with this event where I feel like there's just very few archetypes that work sufficiently for people without having already spent a lot of cash. So it feels like it's a weird Konami, like I get it. Like I was excited for these types of events, but I don't think this one, I think this one just highlighted an issue I have with Master Duel, which is having a shit ton of uh, like lower currency that you can't really use, higher currency that's kind of like, you're not going to waste on the event and or to encourage you to use money. Nah, mate, like, slash assault mode? <clears throat> Wait, what do you mean, Samurai? Damn, just take my jacket off. Um, so... Ass. What happens if we just search ass? Slash assault mode. What do you mean slash assaults? <clears throat> I don't know what- oh, these! Right. I don't really know much about these cards. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't really know much about these cards, Samurai. <clears throat> Explain them to me. Explain the assaults to me. Because I don't, I haven't even seen any of these people using these on ladder. They're good, thank you. All right, cool. Are you saying that I could use Hyper Psychic Blaster Assault in my deck? Not be summoned unless you use Assault Active Mode. Uh, so Assault Mode Active. This battle battles a monster, inflict the damage to your opponent. So it has nothing to do. When this card's on the field and destroyed, you can special summon uh, hyper Psychic Blaster, which I, I have Hyper Psychic Blaster down here. So, but... So it has... But the thing is, Samurai, this is another one if you're using these cards. These are all ultra rares. The only rares you have here are these ones. So what you're saying is you want me to craft these for the event. <laughs> this is my point. That I feel like this event has a big issue with like, it's very, it's just expensive in a way that I don't know if I like. And you pretty much will see all the same decks. Like, it, hang on, I'll bring up something here. Oh no, I've just pulled a, uh, uh oh, where'd it go? There we go. Is the current event just synchros? Uh, yes, no extra deck monsters other than synchros. But the problem is people are not using synchros. My dragon unity deck works for the event. I'm golden. See, that's what I was talking about, Lucky. Also, welcome, man. That's what I'm talking about. You have this situation, essentially, that you will find people who uh, have basically either already had a synchro deck that they rely, rely on, which, by the way, I don't use the synchro portion of Blue Eyes that hard. Like, they're, they're my kind of protection cards. They're my, they allow me to build into something. It's not like I'm going to lean into them to win a game. 
Whereas other synchro boss monsters can win you the game. So things like Red Arch Fiend and uh, Crystal Wing and all those sorts. Like some of them can allow you to win the game, but a, a lot of synchros I feel like are more supportive cards unless you're willing to dump into them really, really hyper specifically. So you'll find like, if I, if I go to Master Duel meta and then we go to the current event, which uh current event yeah, i'll bring it up on screen so here's the new event ignore all the ads we might might disable the ads so it's just not annoying for you guys here Um, so this is on Master Jewel Meadow. So this is looking at like a scrape of like a Holy Pedex that people have been using and some user submitted ones and stuff. And, um, what we find is this situation where, man, it, I feel like maybe I should back up. Hang on. We'll, we'll back out of here. So it's not as confusing visually. Um, so with this event, you'll notice there's a trend with a certain dex. Virtual Worlds, which is top meta in um, normal uh, ranked, are very good. They just lean heavier into their, their, their other synchros they can tap into. Pure synchros, so junk synchrons. Um, uh, what else have I seen a lot of? I, I, okay. For the record, if I could and I had the currency, which is something I want to build... I would be building my Shiranui's. You know I love my Shiranui's. This would be the deck I would be using for this event, but I don't have the cash for it. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna burn a shit ton of cash to play my Shiranui's. I think they're amazing, but um, I'm, <laughs> they're not gonna win me anything on ladder, so I'm not gonna dump a hundred bucks to to play them. Um, but zombies and zom zombies and Shiranui's are probably something I would play outside of this event. Um, but then we have like. A situation where it's like it gets a little squizzy it gets strange is the terms of decks that people are playing now i've seen people running true dracos i've seen people running um like uh pendulum decks pendulum decks are very strong a lot of decks that just they just won't even use the extra deck because the synchros are just useless to them so i think that's a bit of this issue that this event happens to have which is the synchros are actually too slow you either have this weird situation where the speed of the, say, the junk synchrons and things like that, they were very, 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 they're very fast. But if you can stop them mid tracks, they just lose. Versus the other way, which is control decks that are very, very slow, or synchro decks that are just they they are control decks and they're kind of slow. So the the speed in this format is either breakneck pace that you have to get lucky on your opening hand, or you have to get or very slow and i think that's the kind of weird feeling this event has and you can definitely sense when you run into someone who's dumped a bit of cash um and that's a little less enjoyable when it's meant to be these events are meant to shine different aspects of Yu-Gi-Oh, and not necessarily require people to be hit with essentially like pay to win stuff but uh how did the normal rare festival go? I thought that was fantastic. Honestly, the normal rare festival was probably my favorite because it was the most creative I'd seen people. I ran into so many different types of decks. Normal rare festival was people just experimenting. There were people like myself where they had a heap of normal rare currency to burn and we just made decks. We just made a whole heap of random shit. And there was some really fun things in there. And um, I think that's pretty cool. And I kind of want more of that. I don't think the ban list for this necessarily worked very well because it opened up the doors for some problems, in my opinion. Have you thoughts about making a deck but getting chat to choose the cards? The problem is, Samurai, it has to be something I own because I can't waste currency. I would only waste normal currency at this point. I don't even really want to waste rare because of some of the decks I'm planning to build. So um, I like the idea, but unless chat are uh, providing a little bit of cash to be able to try and get some cards... I wouldn't do that. It's, I think it's, it's just too awkward. And I wouldn't want chat to provide money for something like that. So, 
I have the perfect card for you then. Yeah, hit me. What card are you thinking? But yeah, you can see here another one is Ancient Warriors. And Ancient Warriors are good. Like, I I would suggest maybe picking up them. Um, some of the dangers, Yosenjus, they're okay. Um, uh, there are cards here that I think that people would run for this event that can be used in ladder, but not once to base an entire deck around. And wasting your currency on the ultra rares and super rares that are the synchro cards... You'll notice everyone is running the same ultra rares and super rares here, which I think is a little frustrating. Um, like the rares you see that are being used by people are not like, there's probably like a handful. There's probably like three of them. Um, and I don't know. I just, I'm not necessarily into it. Wolf. Wolf. But anyway, bitching and moaning about the synchro event over. I will actually play it. I do want to play. I've been enjoying playing Cyframes um, because I Cyframes are nice and cheap. I've actually created them. Um, I've used them in various different things at times. So like they're not a card that I'm necessarily against crafting, but I'm not going to craft the ultra rares for it. Wolf. Whoop. Which wolf though? There's many wolves. Or are you just wanting our boy, Silverfang? Just Wolf? Is there a card called Just Wolf? Oh, there is two. This boy here. I completely forgot this exists. Oh, this is the Joey card. I forgot about this card, yeah. This alpha will be used in this sense of smell to find the enemy. Yeah, quit sniffing my socks. Do you remember which ones all have these texts, these flavor texts, Samurai? I legitimately don't remember. Because uh, there's a handful of cards that are like Joey cards. Joey is the enemy. Joey's always been the enemy. I've been meaning to remake my IRL Crystron deck in game. That'd be take a lot of crystals. That's the problem. There's, I feel like the cost is a bit too high in this game right now. Like I've talked about it before. I think this game is not great in terms of like cost for acts and stuff like that because a 10 pack in this game which is fucking crazy compared if you can't compare this to any gacha game whoops didn't mean to click that um is essentially 23 bucks 24 bucks american that's 30 bucks australian i'd like to point out like just how cheap packs are it's like irl Yu Gi Oh packs it's insane it's so expensive if you've ever played a gacha game this is ludicrous, the amount of price. And gacha games are designed about you rolling for a unit and you'll probably use maybe like five units, three to five units in a game. And those units can be upgraded with re-rolls. This is a game that gives you rolls where you're probably not gonna use 90% of what you've pulled out of the packs. And they are more costly than any of the 10 packs. You actually need to buy it uh, you can go in free currency, Thomas. Like, the way these games work, it's a gacha game. So there's a lot of free. So you can see how much free I've got up here. But there is definitely a problem with these games where, like, this price is mad. I would say this is the price range that you probably should be looking at. Going up that high is a mad madness, spending that much. Um, but the problem is these types of games are very, like... <sighs> People convince themselves that it's okay. Especially ones that play IRL Yu-Gi-Oh, I would imagine they're probably like, yeah, this is actually not that badly priced. But for card games, this is expensive. I've played lots of different card games and they're not necessarily this expensive. I know that they're smaller formats, but, and the cards aren't as complicated, but that's that's a high price margin, I think. And I think that they, they probably need to think about reducing that cost. But that is something that you generally don't see. Um. I, I think that you won't see the price come down. I don't think I've ever seen Duel Links has come down. Predatory is the word you're looking for? 
yeah, Sabrini, thank you for that. No, I, I would get, I, I agree. Konami has figured out what they can get away with, and they're probably going to stick with it, for, unfortunately. And that this event encourages that. The idea that people are using money to play this event to get the free currency, or using their free currency to get the same free, free currency or less, is a little worrying. Um, so, yeah, I, I would not suggest it. I've never spent any money on this. Oh my god, lucky. Yeah, I've, I've spent a little bit. I spent at the start and I spent a little while back, but not that much. I think I've probably spent a grand total of maybe $80 on it, but I've probably spent at least $120 uh, worth of hours in this game. And that's where when you play, play free to play, you have to try and decide how much you're willing to pay for how much you're enjoying your playing. But if you're playing the game just to get the free currency and you're not really enjoying it while getting the free currency, then you shouldn't be playing that game. And I would say that that applies for like every gacha ever. So think about that when you're really playing a free to play game is, <clears throat> are you playing the game to do the dailies? Are you playing the game to have fun with it while you're doing your dailies? I got one for you. Check out Skull uh, Summon Skull Stalker. Skull Stalker. Oh, this is this is the Kyber uh, deck. Oh no, this is a different one. Voice. He's gonna grab you with uh, monster with his claws. Then attack again with his poison stinger. Who the hell does uses this card? I appreciate they did this. This is very fun. I've been pretty successful just slowly building decks I like. Well, it's it's been rough rough for me. I'll tell you that. The costly life of being a Blue Eyes player, Lucky. Check this shit. Look how expensive my deck is. Who wrote that? The localization team must have just had some fun. Joey did. They had it on staff, Joey. But yeah, you can see here, like, everything is pretty much super rare or ultra rare, minus Spiral, Nebula, God, uh, Cladis, Cataclysm that I don't really use that often, and Whitestone. And then all my extra deck are all big boys, apart from Dragubulon and Heart Earth, and which is why you saw you see a lot of these two cards, especially in the XYZ event. You saw a lot of these two, and which was fine. Like I thought that was okay, and in the normal rare event, like people people were able to craft a thing that they actually were able to use, and I think that's fine. But there is a lot of expensive cards. And there's a lot of expensive cards that I'm not quite sure why they're expensive as well, because they're, they're not even that staples. Doing dailies generates sunken cost and time in attachment, which further drives purchasing. That's the one, Informidable. You really hit it on the head there. And that's the thing, it's that's why the these these philosophies against um I guess uh I'm gonna say like um the philosophy of essentially free to play games are like um the philosophy of free to play games and being it's it's predatory it's definitely one of those things if you don't have if you have an addictive personality if you have a personality that has the ability to splurge then perhaps you should not be playing those games and you have to sort of retrospective go look back of how much you've spent on something and, and see if you think that was actually worth it. And I know friends that have spent way too much on different things, like from League of Legends to Dota, um, like Overwatch, like all these sorts of things. They've put in countless hours into that game, but I they enjoy and hate those games at the same time because of it. And I can almost say the same with this game and it's to some degree, because but that's mostly because it's a competitive game and I feel like balance i feel like the balance is the problem with with this game it's less so the the pricing at this stage i do think pricing needs to be looked at but um yeah anyway we, I, we, we should totally do a duel i've just been i've been talking about this these events compete like too much but this this honestly this event really was an accumulation of what i think a lot of problems exist within this game and um i do hope that they look at it and i mean just one more thing to touch on one more thing chat if you've looked at these cards in this particular event, you'll notice there is a lot of very costly cards that are shoved into these 
pre-mill pre-maids if you do not have money to build decks i highly suggest you playing these loner decks because these loner decks are very good actually and they also all function basically the same <laughs> they basically are all synchro speed summoning so if you know how to play that style and you want to play that style then just play these decks they all pretty much work the same but yeah all right and you can see I've, I've already played a decent amount of this event I, I i i like playing the events i like playing the events probably more than playing ladder these days but uh let's jump in i hate talker code talker i actually don't mind code talker that much anymore i actually am starting to realize there's some other cards people have been leaning on recently that they've finally discovered they're actually quite strong and i don't really want to see those which is like um uh the guard dragon guy um, he's he's quite scary. I had to search who he was. Oh, the meme guy, Joey Wheeler. And you not jo Thomas? You might need to watch the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh. My suggestion, if you've not watched the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh, even if you're a modern Yu-Gi-Oh person and just don't do the anime, the first season is worth watching. It is very dumb fun. It's barely related to the game in some regard. There's a couple more, but the other card I think of is called is Mio Toko. I'll have to look at that after the match, Samurai. What the fuck is this? I think I'm versing, um... I must be versing true Jackos, but this is what I was talking about. Look at this. I'm 99% sure that this person is probably not running... Um... This person is probably running true Dracos or controls. Kyber just legit summons three blue eyes for free. It's amazing. I'll watch it for you. Do it. It's amazing. I genuinely really... So there's a Twitter account that, hang on, I'll try and find him. There's a really good Twitter account that he basically like, he just, he's made all of the Twitter, uh, all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! first season into an abridged, like each episode in a minute. Um, uh, hang on, if I can find it. Yu-Gi-Oh! episodes in a minute. Oh shit. Okay, this is true Draco. I'm about to get hit very hard. Again, people crafted this card. This card is not used otherwise. Like... There we go. So if you're not followed this guy, my, I have a high suggestion. You should go check out this bird, this person's Twitter. They're very, they're very, uh, very fun edit, and just proves just how dumb old you used to be. Why did that guy not attack? Can he not attack? Well, I'm, I've got full, I've got Psy frames out the wazoo, so he literally can't do anything to me. So I'm just going to negate this boy to death. But um, <laughs> where we need my Psy frame uh, field card to really do anything. So he's a counter deck. I'm an, a counter counter deck. So we're just going to, we're going to just, uh, we're just going to chill. And he's about to lose his card. Because <laughs> I have beta. Whoa, what is this song? Chat, if anyone knows what this song is. I forgot Chris Trons were part of the, tra the Traco banner. It's very weird. Like, I did not know that this boy existed. Oh my god, I love this guy. This guy's my favorite guy. Best guy. Best favorite man. I love you. Thank you. I now have I now have a synchro on the board. <laughs> this is why okay, so chat, if you want a fun deck to kind of play, I do suggest maybe checking out the Psy frames. They they're kind of fun. Make 
Stone Soldier, attack the mood! I love that they turned that into a proper card. It's very good. There's a lot of amazing memes from the, the first series. Alright. So this is a person that's probably playing a pretty standard what a, what he normally uses. Up, oh, it's true Dracos. There we go. I told you, chat. Told you, chat. No one is playing synchros. Everyone has not got the money, so they're just playing anything that isn't synchros. Because I, I have a I have a Draco that I true Draco deck that I use for on on ladder, but like I uh I'm not gonna use that here. Um, all right, what do we want? Uh, I want my boy, Gamma. Gamma is like the one. Gamma is the most versatile by far because it just activates on monster effect. So he can't, he he basically has to attack over them. So he, it, it's very hard for True Dracos to win in this matchup. So he's gonna he can only attack those two, and they were gonna go away anyway. So they're just meat shield. So he, they they either get banished or yeah. Okay, so he knows that he should just uh, attack them anyway. Shouldn't attack them. All right, so we got some virtual worlds. Let me check that down. That way I can stop any graveyard effects from monsters, which... Uh, I don't actually know if they have any, to be honest, but... I honestly thought this was Metal Gear Rising music for a moment, though. So this, I think, is all Yu-Gi-Oh! music across all the, like, the various, like, animes and, anime and stuff, so... So the funny thing is, I've been trying to figure out if the Virtual Worlds plus Psyframes work, or is it you need more Virtual Worlds than Psyframes? But I'm kind of wanting to have, like, I kind of want to run more Psyframes again. I kind of did this, and I'm like, I kind of think I'm enjoying the Psyframe element a bit more. I have a sand, uh, Wind Witch cards in my Witchcrafter. I want to see the... So, I, I was actually looking at um, using... Uh, Wind, uh, Wind Witches, but I think they, they were the ones that are very good. I think they're a little expensive, maybe. Um, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's see. Hmm. <clears throat> So I can't really do anything about this because I haven't got the virtual worlds that I need, but... True Dracos are a bit more consistent of control. They are, but if they get negated on their draw, they they can they can pitter out pretty quickly. Um, you, if you can hit them in the right spot, True Dracos get kind of stuck. Yu-Gi-Oh! the sex? What does that mean, Tante? I wonder if the G in Yu-Gi-Oh! stands for giggle? Hang on. Hang on, Tante. Uh, Samurai. What do you think the, what, the U stands for? You giggle. Oh, my. You, you... Samurai. The U stands for Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh Giggle O. I really need that trap card. Yeah, I mean the, the field card. I was going to destroy that anyway. I don't know why I did that. I just wanted more walls. 
wait, hang on. Wait, hold up. They've just, they've just, okay, this playlist got getting me DMCA'd. All right, back to the lo fire maybe. Back to the lo fire Or we can go to this playlist. Let's try this playlist. I know the conversation is moved, but I feel the obligated to put it as plainly as possible. Free to play means the business plan is engineered to invariably oppress all classes of players based on how vulnerable they are to predation. Those classes break down on mere economic strata, but along the social fractures of mental health instringent. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing, Informal. Understandably, I the thing is I appreciate what the industry does. I think free to play is not necessarily the wrong way to take the industry. I think that it's still in its for, uh, almost infancy still of how it's approaching as a model because even in real world, like just outside of the games industry, the fact that as a sort of marketable approach to providing a service or product in the form of a access first pay later model is not something that is particularly common. And I think that essentially that um, it's interesting to have uh, the situation where you have essentially the, um, what I would say is a model that can work and has proven itself to work in various areas without necessarily being predatory under the guise of it is more the fact that they are having people hanging at a later stage for what they believe is the worth of the product rather than the other way around which is the company charging more money than what they think that it would be as a standard priced game so say if a game comes out and it's 60 dollars and then people are oh my god this is a problem Hang on, I, I, I'm just having to think. We'll do Psy frame beta. Um, so, uh, say if you pay a for a $60 or $100 game and people are paying that amount, they get maybe free DLC or they get no content at all or sometimes they even tack on additional pay stuff such as like costumes and things like that. And... Um, uh, I don't know why I couldn't summon there. Why I couldn't beta activate? Oh, because I activated... Oh, whatever. Um, so the idea is that those games are set at a price based on the figure that the industry dictates, which sometimes cannot be fair to the particular companies and things like that. So some games will be AAA, will be priced at one, and then the indie ones are forced to a lower price because they're considered to be, they are a smaller experience or they have had less effort, so they need to get less marketing and pricing and all that so that's a big old complicated thing but then you have the opposite which is the free-to-play model which is very much associated to essentially people that are paying the amount of money that they believe is um in relation to what they think that it will be worth that's how it should be but in a lot of cases people will end up purchasing a game um or not purchasing playing a free-to-play game spending way more way way more than they would on a hundred dollar game and play it for about the same amount of time and be like yep i've uh this is this is like this is my game i love this game and they seemingly have enjoyed it more because they've seemingly paid more for it and that's because of the predatory instincts that have been installed into that game so it's it's depressing that's kind of how it be but fingers crossed uh, I'm guessing virtual worlds. Um, I'm fingers crossed that we have a situation where one day um, we will have essentially an industry that really leans heavier on the ideals of what Monster Hunter does where they have a full price game come out and then they give you free content ongoing to encourage people to continue playing it 
to keep the multiplayer aspect alive, but also bring more people into the game to have a very large product to be able to play. It can be intimidating for some people, which is fine, but I think that's a lot better. And then the same thing for the free to play model, where essentially you have people that are uh, basically uh, Oh, this is an assault mode deck. There you go, Samurai. Someone's actually using assaults. Um, so having a situation where then the opposite occurs, where people are getting ongoing content from a free-to-play model that are associated essentially to... Um, being given the content that they deserve off the free-to-play model. Um, and then it is one of those, like, give him... It's a push and pull. It becomes a situation where they continue as a free-to-play model based on the ideas that they are actually successful. People want more of it. They genuinely want more of this thing. And the communities band together around it. And rather than having it so it's actually doing the opposite, where it's they're trying to encourage people to keep putting in money to keep it going like it's 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 a weird a weird dynamic and that's the thing of like it's the same as do you know what it's that weird thing of like it's the same way i'm doing this where it's like essentially um it's the same way that i have to do with streams where it's like to continue doing it i do need to find an element of like i want to put out content that i think is relevant enough and enjoyable enough for people to watch to feel like they want to put in a bit of money versus the ones that it's like uh they are just doing sort of almost predatory in tiles in, in clickbaity or whatever it might be where it's a lot of stuff where it's like they're just trying to get people their foot in their door to get them addicted to stay at their, their their stream and stuff like that and it's like you may not think it works like that but there are streams that are a bit like that where it's like it's it they're just trying to find the best way to monetize what they're doing and it's like it's a it's a push and pull it's business is business is a tricky thing um solution would be to set a price that each player gets everything a player paying a negoc a, a paying payer a paying player who spends what they feel is necessary to obtain the neurological high from beating it and can't easily obtain the same material I honestly do believe, Kalinima, I do honestly believe that there should be a cap um, in terms of how much people are allowed to put in in a certain time frame. But it's very difficult to associate what should be the appropriate amount that a player should be able to spend within a time frame and stuff like that. So It's not common to price like this because the only way to break profit requires cultivating addictive behavior. I I know, I know. It's, it's one of those things that this is why I have a big issue with, like, and why a lot of people have disdain for marketing people. Marketing and business people are a part of, in, in part of the industry where it's like essentially, oh, that's bad. Um, where it's like people have disdain for them because of the fact that there is a lot of elements in terms of like, that's what they're trying to do to the industry in a sense. Like they're, they're just trying to find the best way to profiteer from it. And yeah, that's why, I keep saying, games companies aren't your friends. Please be very, very aware that the games industry... Oh my god, what a the hell is this hand? Uh, uh, really care about Cold Buy right now, I guess Ash. Um, like, I, what I would say is like... I kind of need it. Not Ash here. I don't really know what I can do here. I'm, I might be a bit stuck. This is why I'm talking about, I think, the virtual worlds. So I might have to take them out. If I just go straight back into Psy frames and just be full counterplay, I think it's better. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's definitely one of those things where the industry is just... You can't, you can't let them befriend you, essentially. All right. Now, this is probably going to negate it. I can't. I assume she. This is an Omni to gate. I'm fairly sure she's pretty free to just do what she wants. You guys are a little more vicious than other games because it's based on a lottery. 
The game's in packs. Yes, I, I very much. It's a gacha. This is why gachas are very dangerous. Um, did I just hang on? Did he just target Ash Blossom? Hang on, what? Whoa! Oh, what a cool dude! I like this guy's deck, and then I've just I like it even more. He's using Tiamaton. My little boy. I used to use this boy in Dragon Links all the time. What is this deck? I actually like this deck. So it's an assault deck. This is interesting. Again, he is running Baron to Floor, which I don't have, which is costly. Nintendo loves me, you're just jealous? I'm sorry, Tante. They may not love you. Mario has no warm feelings towards you. He just thinks about your pasta. Your delicious golden rimmed pizza pasta. Um, do you think it's strange that people during the festivals to use not what the festival is about? Like not using the synchros for a synchro festival? There should be a bonus rule like you must perform one synchro summon in this duel. I don't know how they would approach doing that samurai. I, I, I don't think they could really enforce it. But I do definitely believe that uh, they need to come up with a better approach to it. I think that they need to lock out deck archetypes that don't use them. And I don't know how they would do that. Um, because it's definitely one of those things with um, this event. Oh, I'm about to get super fucked up, chat. Um, all right, I have Gamma in hand and I have Ash, so that's really good. So I can just... I kind of don't want to Gamma that. I want to gamma that. Yeah, I, I okay. So okay, here's the thing, Samurai. I think that they need to approach it better. But personally, I think the reason why this event is like this is because people are not willing to spend um, currency on this event. I saw a theory people had on Reddit, which is they think that like um, they think that people should probably. Um, Oh, formidable, thank you. I don't know why they didn't come up with a notification. I appreciate that. Sorry to drag you focus, that's okay. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Like, I'll, I'm mostly on autopilot anyway, because this is a counter deck. Pretty much as, as soon as a prompt comes up, that's what I'm looking for in this deck. I'm, I can play a little bit more auto, auto like this one. Um, but yes, the, the, I saw a theory people were saying about with this event, where the reason why people are playing it the way they are is because there are associated rewards. And I agree that I think this event either needs to, like, either just remove the rewards, reduce the rewards, something just to encourage people to use it for fun. This event should be for fun. People aren't playing it for fun. People are trying to try and profiteer from it as fast as they can and get out. And that's why everyone's like, you just look up, like, um, all the event ones just being like, it's decks for this event. And it's like, all those articles are doing massive numbers. All these, like, people that are making videos, great numbers. People that are doing this, they're literally, they don't get a good hand. They literally drop. They're not even going to try to do the match because they're not wanting to have fun. They just want to win. And that's why I think that's flawed for these events. Um, and I think, again, it's highlighting this problem. But I, it's... Every now and then, like, that person we run into the assault thing. Like, I, if that person plays that assault outside of this event... Kudos, like, I think that's a cool thing that's happening. This person's trying out a, like, a, a deck that's, like, they enjoy. Versus people are not wanting to try out different decks. They're wanting to just try and get through the event as best as they can. <clears throat> Nintendo wants me to pay $80 a year to play a Ocarina of Time for the two input, two second input delay. Because they love me. Please understand. Buying Ocarina of Time each different console generation. You can't make Synchro Summon a requirement, but you can make it tied to the win condition. I think it, I think if you wanted, yeah. Actually, that's not a bad way. Queen of Med just brought up something that they don't utilize that they probably could in these events. Which is, at the end of every event, you get a score. That score should be determinative of how many coins you get from the match. So... That way, you would have an encouragement to at least hit minimum requi criteria in an event. And, uh, yeah, I think that would work a bit better. 
Did that guy, did that guy miss his timing? Oh, no, he, oh, he just summoned himself out. No, that's fine. I think he was a little confused, but you can see a lot of people not knowing how to pilot these decks and then getting very confused. And I noticed during the XYZ uh, Z, uh, Festival 2 with all the self-kills. Yeah, the self-kills were probably the highlight of like that ideal. Like, People don't want to play these events. They just want the money. And the problem is there's so many people playing this game and they're all starting the events at different periods in time and the events are so short and they don't have any crossover. You're having people basically constantly jumping in and needing to do that. And because there's no ranked in this, there's no ranking of players, there's people that, like, if people actually were, like, getting higher in the ranks, it would probably associate to, like, the strength of certain deck archetypes, but also probably start separating players um, in terms of, like, like, player style. But yeah, it's 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 big old can of worms. This dude really screwed himself over. It looks like, and it looks like we're going full virtual worlds. So let's go full virtual worlds. I'm assuming he's going to hit my my Pathfinder here. I don't mind if he hits Pathfinder. Nope, he's got he's got no ashes. Chat, perfect music started playing. I'm going to have to concentrate. I don't know Virtual Worlds very well, so I've been trying to figure it out as we go. Um, I will grab my boy. So we're going Virtual world style this time. That's not how I thought that worked. That was not the card I thought it was. Ignore the music. Uh-oh. What did I do that prevented me from summoning? Why does Ocarina of Time require eight eighty a year? Pokemon without online sucks. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think Nintendo just needed they they'll work on it. I feel it's early days for them, so I think for me, I'm patient. I'm I'm getting it very cheap just because of my setup, but I know some people, for a single person paying for the Nintendo Online, it's very, very expensive, and don't you shouldn't feel the need to get it. Is there no really no skill based matchmaking? There is in normal ranked uh, informable. This mode it doesn't. This is the event. So the festivals are just meant to be just fun, but people aren't just trying to have fun. F Zero is also eighty dollars a year copium. Yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a with uh, I'm a with Samurai. I feel like uh, I'd pay eighty dollars for it. As... I'm about to get super fucked up by chat because I, I I stuffed up. So okay, I'm gonna have to read this card. So I don't really know Virtual Worlds that well. So this was this was kind of meant to be me learning how to play them, but I've not had time to yet. Also, missing the the SRs I think might mean this deck doesn't quite work without the SRs. Also, is this wearing fishnet stockings? Ah. Whoops. Okay, so I needed to have sent uh, the card in hand. Okay, so this boy needs the card in hand. Okay. Right, that was my bad. Okay, so pretty much I needed to do that, but something locked me out of using Z or GG. What locked me out of using GG, chat? Did I miss something? Was it me activating? This is the other problem with this event, which I want to talk about, is people needing to take an eternity, because a lot of people don't know how to do the synchro line. Um, is... 
is that they have to figure it out. I, I pretty much lost this anyway, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna dip. I'm not gonna wait for this boy to take an eternity. Um, I'm tempted. Do we just hang on? Maybe we just turn this back from a virtual world deck and turn it back into a. Uh, do, we, do we just make this a Psyframe deck again? So let's drop the virtuals. So where are the virtuals? All right, let's grab the Psy frames. So Psy frames. <clears throat> All right. If there's any Psyframe experts in chat that know some like some good cards to go with Psyframes, let me know. Because I think uh, these ones are very good. I might put in a second multi-tread. I'll get rid of these. I do not have the field summon spell cards, so using Pathfinder specifically for that. Card D card. Oh, card D. That's pretty cool. Uh, hang on. Card car. There he is. That's actually a fun card to use. Yeah, that's that's actually brilliant. Fantastic, Clearman. I like that. That's actually really good for draw. Um, we might add another one of each of these. We might add one of each of these. Forgot what else I used. But we need another field spell. Maybe do that. Maybe just do that. Nibiru is in here because of the fact that everyone's mass summoning. Um, I've got some of these... I don't know how useful these will be, considering now my levels are all whack. So I got a four, I got a three, I've got a four, I got a six, two. So these are all tuners. This is a two. Oh, fantastic! The card D might actually be really good. All right, cool. That I'm a, I'm actually happy with that. Let's just do that. Psychic overload. Psychic. I haven't played them since 2017. I have not really played them. This is, again, this is my opportunity to play these cards. Um, which one's Psychic Overload? Overload. Target three psychic monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them into your deck, then draw two cards. That's pretty sweet. I like that. That's fun. I'm tempted to drop... Maybe we drop the Pot of Duality for these, because it's we're very focused. So maybe I can craft for more of that. Get the vanilla guy down to two? You reckon? I reckon he's fine at three, because he's, we've got so many Psy frames here. And the trap card one? Yeah, probably don't need the trap card one so much. He's kind of not very good. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to just get rid of him. Reckless Greed? Greed. Where's Reckless Greed? Oh, Reckless Greed. Nah, I can't. It's an SR, so I'm not going to craft an SR. Um, I feel like there was another spy frame I wanted to put in, but I can't remember what it was. It won't have dead draws. I think it's very unlikely in this deck, though. We're already very light in terms of stuff. Like, we, I don't think he's going to have us get too dead. I just want to make sure that I don't get, like, bopped with, like, um, Call by the Grave or something like that. Um, what else? Is there, is there any just, just good Psychic cards that isn't Psychic Emergency? Psy. So I don't, I'm not a psychic player. I don't usually use psychic decks. Um, I have Psychic Nightmare. We could use him. He's a six. Can I get a six out? I'd need to hit a five with a one or a two with a four, which two with a four is possible. So that is possible. I might get rid of Ancient Worm. 
Ancient Sacred's very strong, but I don't know if I really want to use him. I think this is fun. I think what we got here is kind of fun. Um, we need one more Psychic card. We can't summon this boy unless we have Assault Mode, and we're not going to go Assault Mode, despite Samurai. Just in spite of Samurai, we're not going to go the Psychic uh, psychic Modes. Do it. I don't think we can Samurai. I don't know if there's any that are particularly great here. Boy literally just destroys a card. If this face up card you control is banished, you can banish one psychic type monster from your deck. Uh, and then in standby phase, if this card is still banished, summon that by a monster by this banished effect. It's weird. Hmm, I feel like they're... Oh, here, this is what I was wanting. Send one monster your opponent controls that was special summoned from the extra deck to the graveyard. Then your opponent gains life points equal to the attack of that monster. You can only use it once per turn. I do like that card, but it's 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 actually not a psychic card. It's more of a heal card. If you control a psychic type monster, target one card in the field, destroy it. And if you do, you take a thousand damage. Can you use Sky Strikers? No, definitely not. <laughs> Most definitely not. Sky Strikers are a... Uh, you could use the girls, but like you're not going to be able to use the uh, the Link cards. The Link cards are uh, completely banned. We could use this. This would be a cruel card. But I don't think anyone is hand heavy in this format. Wait, Gusto Condor is a... Okay, never mind. It targets a, a Psychic Monster. I think maybe I just put one more card in. Maybe I just buff up something. What do we get one more of? Maybe we get one more of this bad boy. That's too... Uh, that could be actually a dead hand situation, so that's probably not good. Lose one card, trap card is good for stalling. Oh! Shit, no, actually, you just reminded me. Queen of Um, Day of Peace. If I'm going to run cards like that for stall, Day of Peace is fucking amazing for that. I can just run one day of peace. That's probably fine. That's that's probably okay. Pot of desires for low yolling. True. But the issue with that is that I could stuff myself up and hit the cards I need. Yu-Gi-Oh confuses me. It's it's very good, chat. I like me a Yu-Gi-Oh. And it's not that confusing, it's okay. Um, all right, so we're going second, so he's going to set up, which is fine. Psyframe counterplay. Here we go. Mythical institution. Oh, no way. We're having pendulum mythical beasts. Okay. This is what I was talking about. I feel like they probably should have done something about pendulum monsters. Because Pendulum are very strong in this format. So if you're a Pendulum player, I'm going to get messed up in this deck, aren't I? This is this is like a proper... I'm in trouble. <laughs> Alright. Each time a spell card is effects, place two counters on this card. When that spell resolves, it cannot be destroyed by spell or card effects. Well, four or more spell counters on the field. Once per turn, you can remove four spell counters from the field. Target one monster your opponent controls. Banish it. If you do, the attack uh, gains the attack to the Banished Monster's original attack. 
Oh no, this looks, this looks, oh my gosh. What? Chat, Endymion's not banned. Good thing it's a Synchro Festival. I think they wanted to make Synchro Pendulum a thing, but people just lean into their pendulum. What the fuck? Why isn't... Well, I'm, I think I've super duper lost this one. This one's going to be really hard to win. He perfect handed for an Endymion and he's got chicken game too. Oh man, this is really bad. <laughs> I like my silly little Pokemon cards. This isn't silly little animals. This is a silly little animal. He's a cat man. I haven't seen Chicken Game in ages. Certain decks do still run it primarily. It's kind of really broken. <laughs> Especially ones that need that can destroy a magic card in the field like that. Means that they just get to take advantage with no downside. Look at this. Look at what's happened to me. You Dante, you can't say that until you like. Uh you can't do that. I'll tell you, you need to play a Yu-Gi-Oh game. You need to play it before you're allowed to. What do I do? Funny cardboard. I mean, they are funny cardboard, but you can enjoy art. You can just print the bat, Tati. You can just print the bat. All right. I need. I need some cards really badly. I don't know if I can win this because of Endymion. Dude. See, that's the weird thing about this format is like you have like people running like like top tier, like higher tier decks. Like Endymion, he actually can be run on first in ranked and be fine. But uh, can't, can't do that here. Um. Dude. Fairly sure that's game right there. Alright, you want to talk about negates? Imagine if Yu-Gi-Oh removed negates. I know. I think they're just a bit too prevalent. Like, the fact that you can get full, like, board lock. Board lock is rough. That's some seriously rough shit. It's really funny because it's like, I feel like people that... I wonder whether or not there were any clever clogs that thought about the way that this game would go and decided to lean into a deck at the very start and be like, you know what? I'm going to build a deck that is so versatile that it will be able to win in various formats. Like if you ended up having like these festivals come up. I, I could, it could be flexible in any, oh my God, there's two giant walls of text. Day you woke up and your nipples were completely gone. Like no scars or anything, just flat skin. And then once you leave your room, you find out Yami Yugi died last night. And several days later, you found out that for your entire life, he'd been sneaking into your room while you're slept and sucking on your chest to make two gigantic hickeys where your nipples would have been. Because you were born without them. Not for any sexual reason, just so you would fit in. Vohaya 100. My god. Third day. What? I want you to please tell me that there is a copy pasta and you've not thought about this. That is one of the stranger ones you've put in. Tante coming in with the facts. That's how Tante be. That's what he do. Uh, quick question. Hang on. 
I'll grab my gamma and then we'll answer this question. Um, do you think the intent of the festival is that the limit of the drafting deck pools to playing field enough to obliviate ranking? All of players are playing in the event are just so much smaller than the event of the regular mode that there's enough information to estimate the rankings. Stomping children or getting uh, obliterated by sweaty tryhard is the fun part. I an explicit relief from ladder or other. So the point of the ladder is supposedly meant to be a break from rank. So you can play in different play styles. It is meant to explore cards that we're not supposed, we're not generally finding the strength of generally. Like if you play Duel Links, you kind of know what we're talking about because Duel Links has lots of festivals and I think they're quite successful. You generally did see a lot of repeat offenders come back and certain ones that were just problematic where it's like they were strong on ladder, they were strong there. And that, like one included was the Synchro event, um, Harpies. Harpies were always a pain in the ass. I'm actually shocked I haven't run into anyone running a Harpies deck. You want to talk about a deck that should be relatively decent in this event? We, someone came by earlier and mentioned, um, I think it was Lucky Dog mentioned Dragon Unities. I have not run into a single Dragon Unity. They should be pretty decent. Uh, Harpies should be really decent. I'm surprised I haven't seen any Arch Fiends. No one's playing fucking Arch Fiends or Resonators. That's mad to me. Like they're, they're a very like popular, famous deck. And yet we don't see anyone running it. Um, and it's because no one has the money right now to do that. No one's going to dump into an event to do that. But if you have the case here where it's like the similarly where essentially this event is showing that um, people are willing to uh, they're essentially going to run deck archetypes that they uh, enjoy on ladder and it turns out it works here and it's powerful and ranked they're just going to use that like um, do we have any no we don't let's not hit that I haven't played the festival yet but I haven't really been on Master Duel in a bit. I mean, it's you, probably for good reason, I'll be honest, Lucky. It is a bit unfortunate. Come on. Thank you. I get a freebie. He will get a card from Dryleth, but that's okay. Oh no, he won't. Dryleth doesn't have an activate? Oh, it doesn't. No way. Well, I get a Synchro now, so this is where my advantage comes in. This is where, like, again, we're running into true Dracos. And now we can Synchro Summon. Um, let's see. Do we want... If this card destroys a monster, you can target one special... Uh, s uh, oh, they cannot summon. Okay, yeah, this is what I want. Yeah, this this locks out true Dracos. This is, this is the card I want. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Do you need to do du uh, two double buy cards to play the... No, 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 no. Not at all informidable. It, they're my cards. Um, you don't have to buy... It. They're, they're the same cards you use from rank. It's just... Um, some cards are just not going to be working here. Whoa, dude! What a mad lad. Did you see that? Did you see that boy? He hated that card so hard. Whoops. 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 I special summoned. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Hang on. All right, I'm going to have to sack this boy now because he's going to be in the way. I need Delta. Hey, Unicorn. As a paying player, the point of the festival is, is better rewards for less work. That should be. That's that's kind of the uh, like the attitude it's supposed to have. My dragon units carried all the way to gold in a single day. Amazing, lucky. That's the thing. People like to talk shit about blue eyes. I know I dumped a lot of cash into my blue eyes. I like playing that deck. I really like playing that deck. So I'm totally okay with putting it in cash on that. Like that's the thing. If you enjoy a particular type of deck, leaning into it, totally okay. Go for it. I have two, I need a third Psychic. I just added new missions, so I'm here. Fantastic. Wait, oh, for what, the event, Unicorn? Or 
just in oh is it the resets happen I've only been playing for a few weeks I think as long as you're having fun get to gold do what you play as much as you want lucky I love my dragons I I love my dra my my dragons any dragon deck I'll probably end up using um I'm not really a unity person but um I probably will end up playing uh I will probably end up playing my dragon links at some point um, we are going to probably go to start. Oh, hang on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Because this is a. It is a quick effect. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. All right. Stardust. And I've only got one card on the field, so I'm probably just going to use Stardust here. Oh, for the event, really? Oh, I have to jump back out and double check because I didn't realize that. Target this. I'm also going to activate Psychic Overlord. Psychic Overlord will hit my cards. I will send back these three. And I should get two. And if something happens to Spark, I then hopefully will have another. Man, thank you for the suggestion about... Uh, Psychic Overload. This is a very good card for this deck. Um, good pick, clean him up. Regular rank has terrible winning bonuses relative to the festival. Yeah, they're kind of garbage. So many people are spending for the event. You mean they are buying regular cards to combo specific options rather than spending on cards useful? Yes, yeah. So they're pretty much, they're just... For whatever reason, they're just... People are like, yep, this is... I'm going to lean into, essentially... Paying specifically to be better at the event only. Because they're kind of useless and ranked. It's a weird way you can't juice rewards without throwing matchmaking out. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why they've done that. It's very strange. Um. Oh no, my... Card. Well... This is going to be bad. Wait, what? What? <laughs> okay. He didn't kill Spark for whatever reason. Okay. The only downsides to drag unities is the timer. Oh, because if your turns take so long. I mean, that's the problem I don't... That's why I don't want to play links on... Um, on ladder. I think I don't... I don't like long play decks. I'd rather more turns than, like, a nice back and forth. Like a real card game. Not everyone just does everything on one turn and that's it. That's why I don't mind this matchup. This is a, a kind of a fun matchup actually. So. Oh no. Is he going to sacrifice for that? That'll be really annoying if he does. Um, so let's do. Might accept my call by the grave. I'm going to protect this card, because he can't hit it anyway. Maybe he's showing mercy. I don't think, I think he just doesn't know what's going on. When does the event end? It's like only like 10 days. We've only got like a week of it. The events feel like they're getting shorter and shorter. I don't know why. They, I feel like they should be longer. I don't know what's going up with, I, I like that this event suddenly dropped and it felt like we didn't have too much downtime from the last one. But my issue is the fact that like, we have this weird situation where essentially um, uh, we have the events aren't up for very long. So people are like, they've only got this small window to try hard. I don't think they need to do that. I think it's also encouraging people to play in a sort of toxic sort of way. It's 
weird that they can't juice out a rewards without throwing out matchmaking. I, I, there's just a lot of weird shit. I'm about to lose Spark. I should have realized that he was going to do that. Ow. Alright, I probably lost this match. Let's go. He kind of just got the upper hand and I couldn't really catch up. The deck you're losing against is specifically designed to use cards that you most likely already have in addition to a few rares. Yeah, I, True Dracos, I actually have a True Draco deck because of that. I think True Dracos are good for this event if you don't have rare cards and it counterplays against a lot of what the event actually tries to do. So they make sense that they do well in this event. But my my only concern is the fact that it's like they aren't they aren't you you run into them in ranked. I don't really want to run into cards that I run into ranked really too much. What is this guy's name? It's Stex Shima Senka. He's asking if you want Stex chat with weird leet speak. You can put everything in true Dracos minus two a dynamite. And you, but no one really runs those cards though, do they? Uh, we want gamma. I'm trying to get st strange on Fortnite during my free time. Strange, like as in Doctor Strange. As a Doctor Strange in Fortnite now. Also, anyone who's playing Fortnite, Carousel is a boy or girl. <laughs> Samurai. Samurai plays a lot of Fortnite, if you didn't know. The Ancient Moon Runes are asking for sex. Yeah, it's sex, Shimasenka. <laughs> I like that you put it in Hiragana, though, rather than any, any uh, kanji, though. Alright, so we're about to get synchroed out the wazoo. So speedroids, if you've got cash to burn and you like speedroids, speedroids work. Like, you can see here, like, most of them were rares. This one I think is super rare. I think this is a super rare as well. Um, this is a rare. This is a good one. This this card reminds me of Gravity Falls. I don't know about you guys. All I can see is looking at this is Gravity Falls. Or Zelda. Weebs don't read kanji. True. True. I, my selection of kanji I used to be able to read was very small. So they know their audience. Kanji is fucking hard to read, though. It's it's so hard to remember so many of them. Like, the fact that Japanese people can't read some kanji is kind of highlights just how whack that language is sometimes. I burned so many gems on speed roys. And I find it to be meh, unicorn. Oh, no. That's what I was talking about. This this event is a trap. I feel like people just need to be careful. There is a, this, this is kind of a trap. I don't know about you, Dive, but Newton found out Gravity Falls. <laughs> Thank you, Samurai. Yeah, see, I can't read that kanji. That first half looks like it's it's uh, it's under something. It's something under something. I don't think it's mountain. It's fire under something, but I don't know what that translates to for like what it means. And then I don't know what the other one is at all. But it's definitely it's a question. At least you can tell from the question at the end. I was building speedroids ever since February. So that's the thing. If you were doing it before then, Unicorn, and you wanted to build it, that's totally cool. And if you're not sure how you feel about it, my suggestion, by the way, chat, I, this is my biggest suggestion to anyone who's playing this game. Go and get Legacy of the Duelist. Go unlock every card by just cheating it in because it's a single player game. Go make decks or even go play the on the free, free versions of, of it. And then go test out decks there and then like figure out if you want to play those 
then you can gun for them in this. So you're not using currency that you're concerned that you might lose. Or just make a free-to-play account and then, uh, like, another account, a burner account. Just go test the Gen Genki Deska. Oh, it was Genki. This is an interesting card. What? If this guy is synchro summon, you can sh negate. You can banish one target monster. That guy could have totally just banished one monster, but he didn't. So he's obviously copied this deck from someone. He's not using it properly. What the fuck is he doing? Oh, he's going to clear crystal. Can this guy get both clear crystal and crystal? I wanted to build speed roads just because I anticipated a synchro event. You mad lad. They really need a link monster. It'd be nice to see a lot of the, I feel like that's something they should think about you more unicorn is maybe like older archetypes, like getting like uh, improvements and stuff. And um, I'd really like to see that. Do it, do it, you bitch. No, not that, don't do that. Ah. All right. Well, let's see how wacky whack this will get. In most other gacha contexts, events are opportunities to uh, drop money on units with higher availability rates in the event and then grind the event specific scenarios. Yeah, definitely. That's the thing. That's kind of the weird part about this informable is I have an issue with the it feels like there's this weird like they haven't learnt from modern gacha they've just so i've talked to friends about it and we kind of agree that essentially it feels like they've learnt the uh inappropriate things from dual links i think dual links has let them like learn what they can get away with with very minor reward at times and there's a whole heap of just various little things i'm like oh no um it feels like there's just lots of little things that they've just they got away with but they haven't adapted it to the best of the rest of the industry and the only reason dual links is something i suggest to people now is because there's basically constant events i'm yeah i think i might be stuffed because there's now both crystal and clear um because they're gonna both protect each other. I don't think I can get out of this. I need to, I need to do this right. But look at this, look, this person's obviously burned money on this. Like, why? I don't understand it. All right, now I need to hit one of these. So now we go beta. So he's going to lose Crystal Wing if he doesn't activate here. And if he's missed the timing, I think he's missed the timing. He won't be able to stop Beta now. Beta will kill that. And then Crystal Wing will activate. Trying to target Overload. And then I get to activate Cyframe Gamma. I think he missed the timing, so he stuffed himself up. Do I get this? Okay. That's fine. I don't care about overload. This targets this. He's snop stopped anything. But that's gone. This activates. I get to activate and summon 
my boy. So I'm going to summon this. Now I have Zeta. And then I activate again. Um, now he shouldn't be able to do anything about this. I think, I don't know if it has permanent protection. Okay, I'm wrong about that. Okay, so that's, that's how that works. We need to go Stardust, I think, just to protect myself. So, okay, I, so can I not attack over? So I don't really understand Crystal Clear Wing. Um, so, Crystal Clear Wing. Once per turn, your opponent activates the uh, monster effect, during, except during the damage step. Quick, activate this effect. Activate the effect to the end of the turn. Face up monsters are, is. This face-up monster is unaffected by the original effects of your opponent's monster's effects. Also, it gains attacks equal to the effects of that opponent's monster during the attack. Once per turn, when a spell, trap, or act card is activated, quick effect, you can negate the activation, and if you do, it can destroy that card. If this synchro summon is a card is sent control to the graveyard... Okay. We don't need to activate. It looks like the loner deck. Well, the thing is, that's what I was talking about. The loner decks are very good. Um, it's just kind of disappointing because, like, uh, is this a quick effect? This is a quick effect. So the problem is that I I don't like with um the. The loner decks basically are all the same, and they kind of have weird template guides to lead you to this spot. Which is, again, to encourage you to spend a bit of money. You can pull wins out for free using those loner decks. That is the one thing I will say is good about these, these decks. Is that, essentially, if you are a clever clog, um, you can essentially... Uh, if you're a clever clog and you figure out how to essentially... How am I gonna do this? I need to figure out a way to do this. I might just grab, grab a second gamma. Um, if you're a clever clog and you decide to uh, just use the free loner decks and pull out wins without crafting any cards, you're probably the best off. You will lose quite a lot of matches, but if you wanna go down the I've gotta win more route, it might be what you have to do. Um, let's change this to two attack position. Um, weirdly enough, Nibiru, summoning just normal Nibiru almost seems like beneficial here. Um, we're going to do this. Whoops. Oh, dude. How much is that? It's a thousand. Yeah, okay, cool. Alright, cool, cool, cool. I've got a plan. I've got a plan, chat. I've got a plan. I have a plan? Maybe. I don't know if it's necessarily going to work, though. By the way, maybe we need like Yu-Gi-Oh hair. Like, someone should get someone get me Yusei hair. All right, I'm gonna protect that card. I'm gonna see what he does. I'm gonna take 500 from it. That's okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. We good. I just need like a negate. Because this is effects, this is essentially all card effects, isn't it? 
It's unaffected by card effects. Once per turn, a spell or trap is activated. You can negate the activation. Oh, it's only spells and traps. Dude. Okay. That changes things a little bit then. I want to kill it. I don't think I have to, but I want to kill it. <laughs> so I'm going to do this. I'm going to activate this. And I discard this bad boy. And then he will figure out that what I'm doing. So he'll negate it. It won't be destroyed because Spark Stardust. That'll allow me to use Zeta's quick effect and I'll banish it. <laughs> so then it'll be gone and we don't have to deal with it for a little bit. Alright, there's the effect. It doesn't get destroyed because of Spark. Okay, never mind. Zeta's effect did not go off. That's not how I thought that would work. That's okay. <sighs> Tante, have you have you found me some hair? Why do I why do I have the feeling I'm gonna open this and then I'm gonna I'm gonna regret this? Oh no, thank you. Hell yeah! By the way, if you guys don't know, Yusei is my favorite protagonist. I like Yusei a lot. He's a cool boy. We got he's like the cool boy. I want Yu-Gi-Oh to go back to being like, just, I'm just, it's just a party of cool boys. Um, what can I activate from the graveyard? Oh, Zeta. Uh. Wait, what do I have as Link? I wanted to go to Link 7. I need to get to 3000 attack, is the thing. Who's my strongest card? Who's my strongest chat? It might be Psychic Buster. Weirdly enough. Which means I need to summon Gamma. Alright, well we got- oh it puts it in my hand. I'm silly. I didn't realize that's how that was working. Alright, well, I might move that to defense mode. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna just chill here uh, while I put my hair on. Don't don't look, Chad. I'm putting on my hair. Thank you, Tante. Oh, you've done a perfect job. That is fantastic. I I I love this. Can we make it a little bit wider? Yeah, there we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is brilliant. Fantastic. Um, all right, I'll catch up in chat. Where, where were we at? I feel like you're writing the most relatable article on gadget and things in psychology. Some people just think about that stuff a bit more. I thought boat girls were cute, saw boys and cool anime. So I play FGO global release because I'm recovering type moon. Oh no. Informable. I'm also a statistician, which makes me bad at gambling. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I, I have a really, I don't. Gambling is, I have this, we've talked about this before. I have real like issues in terms of um, essentially like, oh, I don't know why you activated that. I have a real bad issue with like gambling and video games. And that's why gacha has always been like a, a thing that rubs me the wrong way at, at, at points and stuff. But it's one of those things that it's like, it's okay. It's okay. Sometimes people are going to do. I've been watching James Stephanie Sterling. I have no idea who that is. Are they cool? Are they like a cool bean? I need a... 
I kind of am stuck. We kind of ha got a stalemate situation going on here. And I don't know what I can do. I need to figure out a way to get over this boy. Also, ah, welcome in, uh, Tokino. We're figuring it out. Deck them out? Dude, Unicorn, they got 27 cards. I can cycle stuff back in, but that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff I'm going to have to cycle. <laughs> I'm just hoping, I've got Max C active. I'm assuming he's not going to be able to stop it, but let's, let's see how this goes. So I can protect myself. Let's just hope he doesn't remove my Psy frame circuit. I think we need like another, we need like a boss monster. That's what I feel like I need from my synchros. Is there a cheap, normal or rare synchro boss monster? I can't handle Forbidden Droplet. I don't have Forbidden Droplet. If you have one spare, hand it over, Unicorn. Do you, do you know what would be, it'd be crazy to have like a situation where Yu-Gi-Oh ever got to a point where the digital card game would allow trading of cards? Imagine that. It never happened because you just have people make like Smurf accounts and then just they just go get the cards they need and then craft them, trade them to someone. But I love the idea of concept of trading with like real life cards and things like that. But I really don't think you'll ever see that come into play with something like this ever, ever. <laughs> like, because people have their associated like values of cards. You'd have to have a market board that would be managed. Believe in clear mind? <laughs> I can't play clear mind yet though, Tokino. We, we haven't got to the stage where I'm about to like over like win with my Stardust. I need I need some sort of I need a moment. Smurf account explosion would be hilariously bad. It would be super bad. I need like a crazy good draw. He's going to he's going to negate psychic overload though. I need a second thing to go off at the same time if I were to use it. This guy probably is hating life. He's like, "I have no way to get rid of this card. I've gotten rid of I've gotten rid of his one negate because he's only got he's got eight extra deck cards. My assumption that he's he doesn't have a second uh clear wing synchro cuz he's used both of them. Like, I assume that he's, this boy is not rich enough to own three clear wing synchros, right? It's like the idea of making this man hate his life. He, he's bold though. I, I, I'm enjoying the fact that he's like, he's willing to just go on for the long match. We're in for the long haul here. <laughs> and I keep getting bad cards. Um, all right, well. Come on. Come on, dude. I, I don't know what he's searching for. He's not rich enough. I don't think so. Do you reckon this boy has dumped a heap of cash for uh, three ultra red uh, crystal wings? Look, I, I wouldn't even run three crystal wings in my blue eyes deck. You run one at most if you need it. So, again, people burned a lot of cash for this event, it feels like. All right, here we go. He's going for it. We're getting speed roided. I need to do this now because I need to protect myself and I don't want to get negated out. So I've got two Psy Frame Gammas in hand, which by the way, are not single use effect. I can do two Gammas. If he gets, if he, if he tries to negate me in one chain, uh, twice in one chain, I'll be able to negate him. So hopefully I can get the most out of that. Games journalist. Oh, I forgot. J uh, yeah, Jim Sterling. Does he still, do they still go by Jim Sterling? Or is it, um, do they still have the nickname Jim? Or is it the, they've, they've gone for a, an alternative? What are you, did he really just, did he just draw into nothing? What's happening here? What is this match? This is where I'm suffering from counterplay, where I'm like, I can't get over, 
I can't get under. I've just got to go through him. Is he baiting me out? What's happening here? I, got, I hit him. I hit him, chat. We did it. We got a hit in. I did a hit. Stephanie James now. Uh, James Stephanie. Okay, so so they don't they don't go by a nickname. No, no, I, I get that. I, it was more just whether or not um that did they still have the branding is um uh Jim Sterling. Jim's a loose cannon though. Like <laughs> I have to say. Jim's Jim's a funny one because sometimes I agree, sometimes I disagree. Very vocal, I would say, as a as a games person sometimes a little bit too aggressive but there is a lot of things where it's like I, again this is why i've talked about how i i think that you should be critical about the industry but don't get too don't get too stuck in the negative because it makes it harder to see forward and enjoy the things you like i feel like i i again the people who are the most vocal about stuff are usually fans. Usually fanboys are the most. Like, they love something so bad they're willing to complain. And they know all the eccentricities to talk about and complain for endless. As I do on stream lots of times. But they are also the same people that can be the problematic ones that can hold back things because their vocal voice can make an impact in the industry to a point where you start seeing negative repercussions from it. And I think that's where sometimes you've got to see where industries don't necessarily respond to as like what fans say. And I think that I, this is why I, I have a bit of an issue with Nintendo sometimes where you kind of see the pendulum swing. Z Zelda is definitely the one that I like to bring up sometimes is the pendulum swing of uh, what like listening and then not listening to the like people or going to one group, then another group. It's it can get very rare varying results and i think it just it can sometimes alienate groups of fans which happens for me also thank you for the water maybe and i think that, that, that perhaps perhaps sometimes you have to remember both sides like the human element on both sides Do you know what that I love about Yu-Gi-Oh though? It's very easy for me to talk over it. <laughs> People take all their turns. So if you ever want to hit me with the like the uh the deep meaningful, this would be the time. Give me the rant space. Yu-Gi-Oh is a perfect like soapbox arena. Person takes 10 to 15 minutes taking the turn. I've dissected the entire history and problematic nature of uh, the Pac-Man series. And why Mrs. Pac-Man is no longer allowed on the screen. Alright, so he's got fast. So he does have... Bye-bye! Did you hear about the Macca's Garfield mug from the 90s that had a fuckload of lead in it? No. I know about the Magmo's, uh, the Garf... I probably shouldn't have done that. I don't know why I did that. T Tante, do you know about the, uh... All the phones? All the weird Garfield phones? I'm assuming, Tante, you must have watched, um, Eyepatch Wolf's video, right? Probably should I did that too late. Uh, too early. Uh, all right. The Garfield phones is a good one. I like it. All right, so he's now immune to effects and he's very big. I watched Izzy Izzy's Garfield Iceberg. What? Who? Pac-Man no more? No more Pac- Well, Pac-Man's fine. It's Mrs. Pac-Man. Mrs. Pac-Man is not a real Pac-Man. So Pac-Mom is now the real Pac-Man. All right. 
We're back in the silly frames. I've now lost my boy, but that's okay. We've got more things to do, so... This guy's probably hating his life, by the way. <laughs> oh, we got Yusei's theme. Hello? Hello? <laughs> there we go. Right, cool. Oh, well, finally, we got Cyber's gadget. Maybe I need to put another gadget in. Chat, do you think we need another gadget? To avoid this situation? Speed recovery? I hope he attacks me first. Alright, 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 here we go. Look at how many Psy frames I have in my hand. I'm ready for anything. Pack mummy? Yeah, I think that's what she's called. I think they called her Pack Mum in uh I hope I have enough frames. I have a, I hope I have enough uh oops. I hope I have enough cards. Let's find out. No. Yes. Oh shoot. Uh oh. Problem. Oh no, problem has occurred. Alright. Things might get a little silly here. I might be dead. He just needs one synchro summon. I think he might get one synchro out. But I did pretty good. Look at this. This is a budget deck versus a man who's dumped probably like <laughs> a shit ton of cash. I would say GG. But I'm being punched by my own card. Or am I? You did it in the wrong order. Oh, dude, you did it in the wrong order. <laughs> I just made it to 22,000 points in the event. I'm not even done with because of the event because of missions. I have to have a look at the missions. Remind me after this unicorn. Also, hey, wolf. This dude's hating his life right now. <laughs> it's back, baby! Oh, he's gonna destroy it. Can he destroy it on activation? Yeah, okay, so you can hit it on activation. Okay. Um, okay, well, we're doing this then. Cool. He's immune to the effects. He's going to get big. That's okay. Or is it? <laughs> is it over? Chat, is it over? I think it might be over. I might be free. I think he just... Oh my god, did he just... Dude, you're joking me. Did he just rage quit? Bro! Dude! I'm so upset at this guy right now. Didn't even give me the fucking satisfaction. Don't be like this guy. If you're gonna let me, like, take a million years... Rage quit? That was a massive rage quit. I get this quite often, unfortunately. Because I play like weird rogue decks and then like... <sighs> well, we won. <laughs> so I've just proven a man that dumped a lot of money for this event doesn't necessarily win the event. <clears throat> I only got 50 from it. Sterling is still as caustic as ever, but they have uh, find they've really refined the discourse on loot boxes and microtransactions in the last couple of years. Framing is social justice rather than merely unregulated gambling. It's it's a funny thing. 
because it's such a big topic and I've talked about it like I said before it's still very young like we've had it in our industry for about 10 years but in the grand scheme of things this is a new format of like funding which humans don't have we have not had very many things in terms of sort of monetization in the same format that they have but it's a very big topic it's like massive and it's the reason why i get very excited when i see stuff over in europe where they're talking about actually like having restrictions on it and stuff like that because the idea that there is the regulated discussion that can come into it does at least make them think about it and have companies reflect on what they're doing and what they can get away with and stuff like that so like yeah at the end of the day I do think that there is I love that's why I preach Owens I feel like if you're the type of person who is susceptible to these sorts of like uh like monetizations and like and lose a lot of cash I preach that consumer protection is knowledge you should make yourself knowledgeable make sure you just don't get like suckered into things um all right let's look at those event uh, missions that uh unicorn mentioned so wait well in the mission section what am i doing so hang on so they've just they've updated and given us more or did they reset some oh okay oh cool wait hang on so this is so this is weird so unicorn i did um i did these why did so this is now reset or have they added more because this one's definitely reset because it's win 10 duels in the exhibition which i didn't get that unfortunately so that's not counted but that's weird also only six days have left on this but does that mean hang on how long has the event got left 22nd That's not six days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then if it's American times, eight. That doesn't line up. The missions don't line up with the uh, the event ending. What's going on here? Restrictions on funding and stuff? Uh, more, you can have like regulations in association to what companies are allowed to do with, essentially with monetization. So like there's caps on how much a person is willing to spend. Um, like there was a thing that's in Japan, there's a really good regulation that I like that that's come into place which is um essentially you'll notice this on a lot of japanese reg uh, ones now which is visible gacha rates where essentially you can see how much um how costly it is to essentially go for a particular thing whereas like two boxes are not the same like it might state that they have like both have super rares both have ultra rares but those rates might not be and like you can see in here, like a good example is this game doesn't, I don't think this game has this. So like if we go to the shop and I look at this pack, here we go. They've got it here. So this is a requirement by Japanese law that if you were to do a gacha, you must show the odds. So you can see here, if I were to roll on a 10 pack type, it's a 2.5 chance. Like it's like you can see that the odds essentially odds for cards one to seven so odds just one to seven of these ones on the on up the top here um so you can it basically shows you so you know what you're like rolling for um oh sorry i got this wrong one to seven is essentially the first one to seven slot so when you open a pack because if you don't know the packs are actually separated where the first lot are from the master cat card set the ones on the far end are associated to the actual pack you're rolling on so um that's what they're basically telling you but again it's that thing of them they look at how confusing they make this too they also put it in a way that it is very confusing for people so even if they're giving you the odds to try and tr like make it so you don't fully understand what you're getting your odds on um and yeah it's it's pretty rough like they're required now to show like all these details essentially the 2.5% is the whole rarity of, of the whole rarity pool. Right. right. Those folks are, lose hundreds of thousands of dollars regularly and selling their own stocks is the easiest way to make them back to make yourself a millionaire or billionaire. Cryptos are a joke compared to them. That's the thing. We're, we're, in, the, that's in, we're in the heavy topic territory today, it seems. 
Um, but before we jump into this further into this rabbit hole, I might take a quick break because um, it's getting a little warm in my room. Um, and I don't know why they're. Uh... Oh, okay. This is the, this is what Unicorn was talking about. They've just announced that. Okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break. It'll be a short one, and I will be back uh, for more Yu-Gi-Oh. So hang tight. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> 